what's going on guys it's mike and in this video i just want to go over how i created this asset that i use in a lot of my scenes it's an american flag hanging from a wall if you want to download this project file you can over on our patreon or you can just follow along here anyways let's jump into blender and get started so starting out in blender with the image as planes add-on enabled i'm just going to hit shift a and go to image image as planes and i've got a flag already here that I'm going to drop into the scene. I'm just gonna rotate this 90 degrees and I'm going to start subdividing this. Tab into edit mode and I'm gonna add a couple control loops to the sides and the top. I'm just trying to get these to be semi-square. I'm gonna select everything now and I'm just going to subdivide this about, I don't know, 15 times. Um, the more geometry, the slower the cloth simulation will be, but you can get some better results. This is gonna be a prop in the background so it's not that big of a deal. Um, we should get some nice wrinkles with about 15 subdiv subdivisions. Next up, I'm going to grab these two points here and I'm going to make those a vertex group. That way, if I deselect them, I could easily, uh, I need to hit assign. I could easily select and deselect them as I need. Also, we're gonna be referencing this group in the class sim. The next thing I wanna do is, is um, add some shape keys. So if we run a cloth sim right now, which I'll just show you what that looks like. If we add a cloth sim to this now, it will just drop to the floor. So I guess we can go ahead and add our um, vertex points that we want to pin. So we want to pin that group. So now when we run the cloth sim, it will sort of pinch at the corners, but I want to add like more folds in the center. So we're going to do that via shape keys. So I'm going to start by just adding the basis. So this is the base shape. And now I can add a, a new key. So what this shape key does is I can set key, I could um, set two different shapes, like so I can morph this object in edit mode. And I could use this value slider to slide between those two morphs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my, um, my pinned group. And I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to scale. And I wanna scale in the uh, Y direction, but I wanna turn on proportional um, editing. And so what this is gonna allow me to do is sort of pinch the whole um, flag inward a little bit. So I'm just gonna pinch those inward like that. It doesn't need to be very much. Um, that should be plenty. And now when I go between these vertex groups, let's see, you could see um, or not go through between the vertex groups. When I adjust this shape key value, it should sort of pinch between those two values. And this is how you're generally gonna get different shapes um, with your cloth simulation in general. It's via shape keys. Um, this is a very simple um, way to use this, but I just wanted to, this is how you do all cloth sims. So I added a keyframe at zero value, and then I'm gonna go maybe like 20, 40 seconds, and I'm gonna adjust this to one and hit I on the keyboard to create another one. And now when I run this cloth simulation, it should sort of pinch the cloth or pinch the flag inwards, sort of as if you hung the flag, but you didn't do it perfectly taut against the wall. I could right click to shade smooth, but you see there's still a lot of artifacts. This is because um, we, we don't have that much geometry, but all you have to do here is under modifiers, you could add a subdivision surface modifier after, and you could add as much geometry as you like. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is that the geometry is sort of like clipping into itself. So let's just go into the cloth settings and make some adjustments. The first thing I do is I like to add a few more steps. So I'm just going to add eight quality steps. Um, that just means how many steps in between each frame it calculates. It helps resolve some issues. This is a very simple cloth sim, so I think five would probably be fine, but um, I just adjusted that. I'm not gonna touch any of these other settings, um, but I will go in under collisions and check the self collision button. And I'm gonna set this to 0 0.001 and same for the distance under the object collision, 0 .00, 0 0.001. We don't have any objects in here colliding, but if you did, um, it's kind of nice to just have a uniform um, setting in here. And we could also set the quality steps on this to um, eight as well. And we could run this again and see how it looks. And that looks pretty good to me. So if we were to go and try to apply this, we're gonna get an error that it cannot be applied with shape keys. So what you have to do is you sort of have to let your simulation um, set until it gets to a point that you like. It's 
I mean, it's still moving a little bit, but it's fine. I'll just pause it there. And I'm going to go under my shape keys and I'm just going to, um, uh, how do I activate these again? Um, I think I could just delete them. Just hit the, the minus key and I think they just delete. And then if I go under cloth, I think I could hit apply now, yeah. So that worked perfectly. And you can see now that we have our flag. I like to add a little bit more detail to this because for some reason this is accurate, but it doesn't really appear accurate. So what I like to do is I like to actually tab in edit mode and grab these corners. And then again with proportional editing set to um, sharp, I like to just move those up a bit. For some reason, I think that it just looks a little bit more realistic. Um, I'm also just going to bounce in here and, and add a environment HDRI real quick, just so we could talk about materials. If you don't care about seeing materials, then you could bounce out of here. So for materials and lighting, um, one of the ways I, I like to light something like this is with a, um, a spotlight above it. And we could set that HDRI value lower get a real dramatic lighting. And then for this, we can open up our shading editor. And I'm just going to move this away and, and uncheck these. So over on um, Texture Haven or any of those texturing sites, you'll see fabrics. So I'm going to open up a fabric that I used, which is Fabric 066. If you just search that into Google, I'm sure you'll find it. So now you see what we have there. And now I'm going to add a, um, a mix, mix color. And I'm gonna take my original flag texture and I'm going to plug that in. And I'm going to go like color burn. So depending on which order these are in, depends on which one gets burned onto which. So whether you want you know, it to be super white or if you want it to be take on the brown color from the flag, you know, you can make your choice, but that's how I would just add some texture to the flag. Real simple background, um, nothing crazy in terms of materials. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a like, subscribe, check out other videos on the channel. And if you want to download the project file, it will be available on our Patreon.